Hello everyone, and welcome to the new part one of my Pokemon DS hacking tutorials. Technically, I've already shown these updated steps for editing overworld sprites in episode 11 a good while back, but I thought it was high time that I make an updated version of the first video that most people find this series with. The old version technically still fully works, it's just that it shows a much slower method that I didn't know was already outdated at the time that I made it. I admit I'm a bit sad about retiring my first hacking video. I honestly can't believe a video I thought wouldn't get much more than 100 views has gotten over 87,000. Blows my mind! But ironically, at the start of that old video, I made a joke about how most tutorials I could find at the time were like 10 years old. And now that video is already over 5 years old. So I guess it's time to put old Betsy out the pasture. Thank you all so much for giving her so much love over the years. But all right, let's step into the future. I guess technically this is going to be the first hacking video of the playlist, so I'd better start from the beginning. The first tool we are going to work with is called Tink, which basically allows you to browse the files stored in a DS-ROM. One new thing that I'm going to start recommending with this video is to use the newer version of Tink, 0.9.2, instead of 0.9.0. Not too much is different with this one, it's just a newer, less buggy version that I didn't know about when I first started making videos. So you should be able to use that version with any of my hacking videos instead. However, if you do still need it, version 0.9.0 is still available in the tool zip folder just in case. Oh, right. For those of you who are new here, I compile all of the tools I use in my videos in this folder and then provide two alternate links in the description that you can use to download it. That way you can play with the exact same tool versions that I do and you don't have to go digging for them. But just like with Tink here, always keep an eye out for updated versions as newer ones may come out after my videos are released. One other important thing here to know is the known sprite location folder. This contains a link to a Google Doc that the Discord server and I use to compile a list of sprite locations for each DS-ROM. For my example today, I'm going to want to edit the overworld sprites in Platinum. So I can click Platinum here in the outline to jump to the Platinum section, scroll down until I see Overworld, and I'll find that the file path is data slash and model. Oh, and while we're in here, this message up here started showing up. And I'm not really sure why, but rest assured that the links that we have in this document are not going to take your data. But if you do find anything that looks weird, please let us know in the Discord or leave me a comment. I'll look into it. But you really shouldn't have to worry about this too much. I think it's just a precaution. Alright, now I can open Tink, select my Platinum ROM, and here are the files inside. This here is the data that the path mentioned, then mModel, where I can click on the mModel.narc, and then click Unpack. We now see a large number of BTX0 files. Each one of these is a set of overworld sprites, so we just need to know which of these contains the sprite sheet that I'm looking for. And the Google Doc can come in handy here again. But there are so many overworld sprites to go through, we compiled a list of all the important player overworlds for each game. Today I just want to edit the walking and running overworlds for the male player, and that is number 90. So I just come back to Tink, find number 90, click it, and then click view. And here we are. We now see Lucas over here, and if I click through this list, we can see each of the frames that plays when they are walking or running. Thankfully, we don't need to edit them one by one, as you'll see here in a sec. But okay, I am ready to start editing. I have the BTX file I want selected over here, so I just need to click Extract, or I'll save it come to my desktop here, and now we can move to the second program we need, which is appropriately named BTX Editor 2.0 which I can just open, select my exported BTX file, and now I see all those frames here as one large image. Then I can just click the export button to save it as a PNG, which I will name Lucas Walk. Save. There we are. 
we now have an easily editable picture of the sprite to work with. Compared to other sprites we'll see in later episodes, overworlds are pretty dang easy to edit. In fact, you can even work with them in paint. However, there is one rule you have to follow for your new sprite to be accepted. You can only use 16 unique colors on them, which can be tricky to keep track of. A program that I like to use to track the colors is one called A-Sprite, which is a program you can either purchase off of Steam or compile its source code from their official GitHub for free if you're familiar with that process, which I'll link in the description. You can also check out episode 8 for a couple other tools that you can also use to track colors, which I have opened down here, and I can just drag our image into it. So this is the sprite sheet, which has all the frames of animation that we saw on Tink. Each frame is about a 32 by 32 pixel box. So for example, this is your canvas for where you can draw when your character is standing still. To keep things simple while I was learning, the original character was used as a base when making my sprite sheet. So that way, I knew if our feet aligned, my character was placed in the right spot to look natural in the game. So next, here I'll open my edited sprite sheet. And if I copy and paste them over the original, all my little footsies line up. So control Z, control V, and you can see that they're all good. Now you'll notice the colors over here haven't changed. They still have Lucas's colors, even though I pasted in my sprite. So let me show you how to check the amount of colors. First, I want to right click the layer down here and select background from layer. Then I can open this menu, select new palette from sprite, make sure create alpha channel is unchecked, and click OK. Then I just count up the new colors here, and then just make sure they are 16 in total or under. If you are over, you can try reopening this window, setting this number to 16, and then click OK again. A sprite will then try to remove similar colors from the palette until there's only 16 left. Then you can change the color mode here to index, and those colors will automatically be removed from your sprite as well. Obviously, this is an automatic process, so your results will vary and will probably take some touching up afterwards, but it can be a time-saving option for some. But okay, once your sprite looks correct, you can go ahead and save it. Then you return to BTX Editor 2.0 and click Import, where I locate that edited sprite sheet and pick it. And there they are. I can now click save and either override the original BTX or create a new file. I'll make a new one called Jaywalk. Now you see this one will be made with a BTX extension instead of BTX zero, but that's okay. The zero appears to be optional, but okay. Now we are in the final stretch. I just come all the way back to Tink where I make sure that the right BTX file is selected and then just click change file. Where I can find the new one that I just made. Now, I know it looks like nothing happened, but we just need to click view, and there they are. They should be in here in all of their new framey glory. And there you go. That is how you replace your first sprite. Overworlds are a great type of sprite to start with, as they are both easy to draw and insert into the ROM. I admit I got hooked on DS ROM hacking the moment I inserted my first sprite into a ROM. Uh, can you tell I got a little help from a good friend who drew my final sprites? Yeah, but anyway, I hope that these steps work for you so that you can have that same kind of fun. Now, I am not going to end the video just yet. I am also going to show off how to edit the HM Summon Sprite. This is the sprite that appears on the screen when you use an HM like Fly or Surf, where you'd think this would just be following the same steps I used before on a different BTX file. Especially since BTX 155 here looks like that HM Summon Sprite. I also thought this when I first started and was confused why I could never get it to actually change. I combed this over for months until I finally learned that the sprite is not even in this NARC. It is in... This other NARC called Field Cut It, which if I unpack it, you can see that it doesn't have BTX files. This sprite is actually stored in a way you'll see most other sprites shown in my other episodes are, 
where there is a separate RLCN palette file and an RGCN sprite file. To view these in Tink, you need to first double click the right palette file, which for this sprite is number three, and then click RGCN number 13 and click view. And here they are. Well, okay, I swear they're in there. I just need to shrink this down to 32, which will catch matches that size I showed you in A-Sprite. And then I can increase the height until I can't go any further. Oh, there we go. There we are. So really the sets we'll follow to edit this one are the same as we did before. The only difference is that we're going to extract the spreadsheet directly with Tink instead of needing to pull it out of a BTX container. So I can just click export, save, and bam! We already have the PNG we're looking for. Where I can just open it in A Sprite, and you can see it looks pretty similar to the one we had open earlier. Where the steps to edit it actually are the exact same from here. So I'll just show you my finished version. Where again, you can see I lined up the feet. And that this sprite also has less than 16 colors. So I can just save this new PNG. Return the tink. Change this setting here to replace palette. Click input. And pick my new PNG. Where, there we go. My sprite's already imported. However, there is now a small issue that we need to fix. This RGCN is not the only one that uses palette number three. The, uh, bird that you ride when you use fly uses that same palette to save space. And now you can see the colors are all messed up, which you can see better if I set this to 64 and make it a little taller. Basically, when I imported my sprite and selected that replace option, I told Tink to update this palette with my sprite's colors, which we can see if I click view. So I need to repaint this bird thing with the colors of my sprite, which thankfully is pretty easy to do. I just need to also export this sprite like so. and open it in A-Sprite as well. And here is where A-Sprite really comes in handy. If I look at my HM Summon Sprite here, I can click this menu here and save the palette, which I put on my desktop. And come back to the bird sprite and load palette. So now I can just click these colors and then use them to paint the bird. Let's see, it originally looked like this. So I'll first take the black here, click the bucket tool, fix the lower half, and then also correct the outline. Then I can change the upper half to any color I think looks nice which I think I'll do this one and highlight it with this one. And okay, that came out pretty good, but that's because I actually worked to keep those colors in my palette for my sprite as well. So, okay. I can save my newly colored Boyd. Come back to Tink. And this time, I want the import option to be swapped to original palette. This will tell Tink to import the sprite and point it to the colors currently on the palette instead of replacing the colors like before. Since my bird has been painted with these colors, it should go smoothly in like so. And since we didn't affect the palette at all, my HM sprite still looks fine as well. And once you can view both sprites correctly like this, you are good to go. 
but there is one last quick step to do. Before you use the Save ROM button, you need to pack your NARCs to commit your changes. Which just means you need to click the name of the NARC you edited files in and click Pack. Which you need to do to all the NARCs that you just edited. So I also edited the M model NARC, so I need to pack that one as well. If I don't do this to both these NARCs first, the new ROM that I save will still just show the old sprites. Basically, the rule of thumb with Tink is that any file that you unpack, like NARCs or bins, has to be then packed once you are done changing files. And okay, I hope this has been a good new introduction to overworld sprites. Thankfully, not many sprites have other sprites that share the same palette like that. Any that we know of should be mentioned in the known sprite Google Doc. So be sure to keep that doc and the whole tool zip folder close as you move forward through these videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Good night, everybody!